Hello everyone, uh, we're back once again. <laughs> Sorry, I tried recording this once and the battery went flat, so I'm starting all over again. Okay. <laughs> um, <sighs> we kick off the night with a Lash LaRue Disco Inferno match. Uh, my understanding of it, Drusso's goal was to get as many people uh, on TV as possible, like new people, new faces, on TV as possible, which is a noble goal. But the point is, you want to get the right people, and I think Lash and that would have Lash and Disco. Okay, fine. Uh, from memory, this was a not great match, but serviceable match. Good, uh, an all right way to start the show. You don't want to, and I think, okay, fair enough. Good, uh, okay, opener. Um, Lincoln and Benoit arrive. Supposedly they've been away in Japan. Uh, they're back, and they're not happy with the revolution. They can. Uh, Matter of fact, they tell Saturn they can stick the revol he can stick the revolution. Uh, then we come out of that. It's a Harlem Heat interview with, and it's all about uh, how it, uh, it that Ray got injured and now the, t the titles were then vacated. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have vacated the titles. I think I said that like, okay, don't need no need to do that. Uh, just have uh, Billy Kidman substitute for Ray until he comes back. That would have been fine with me. Uh, you could have done the whole free bird rule with them, which would have been okay. Because uh, the kind of working heel as it is, okay. and I don't mean okay. There's certain things you like that clearly. Uh, going after certain people that the people are cheering for and I think that's how you work heel these days is there are guys that are over that the people like and the heels go after them I don't think it's as clear cut uh, it's not certain things that they do it's just certain things that they do make you not like them it's like Roman Reigns was like, is not very popular with the Smart Mark crowd, and they're booing the hell out of him. And, um, I don't personally don't like it. I think he just needs some work, and he needs to be written correctly, and I think, uh, the more he talks, the more he exposes himself. I think he needs to work on his promo stuff, and I just don't think that they're giving him a lot to work with. I think he needs to be... Goldberg-esque, less is more with him. Uh, so, then after the Harlem Heat interview, which is pretty standard stuff, we're going to win, we're going to be the tag team champions, that stuff. Uh, we, we have the announce, uh, it is announced earlier, by the way, that, that this match would happen. I think it was at the top of the show, this was announced that there would be a three-way dance, and it would be a street fight for the WCW tag team titles. I I don't know why it had to be a street fight, but okay. Um, three teams, fine. Uh, Nobbs and Hume, uh, no, uh, Brian Nobbs is pinned by one of, the, one of the Harlem Heat guys. I think it's Stevie Ray. Uh, and they're now, what, 10, I think it's like 10, I think it was their 10th reign as tag team champions. Uh, that stuff gets cleared away, DDP comes out, says him, him and Kimberly, they talk about what happened in the hotel room from the previous Nitro, and, um, yeah, <laughs> he ends up, uh, DDP ends up challenging Ric Flair to a strap match later that night. Okay, uh, Goldberg arrives, he's looking for Sid, he wants to, he, you don't get much with him, it's like, boom, in and out, I think, I think Russo does things like that, okay, gives you, like, he's very much, get to the point, get in, get out, I think that's, 
I think that's alright for TV. I don't know if it's alright for um, pay per views. I think I think uh, I think he could like there's matches that need to need to go longer. Um, Eddie Guerrero is interviewed by Mike Tanay. He's told that no animal, the filthy animals are not allowed at ringside. Neither is the revolution. It's between him. It's between him and Eddie. Uh, at Perry Satin and at him and Perry. Fair enough. He also has the watch from the previous Nitro that he stole from Ric Flair. Yeah, everybody seems to be feuding with him. DDP's feuding with him. The animals are feuding with him. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, okay. Uh, but they're feuding through him through David, who is not going to be doing much. Uh, Matt... Uh, Perry Satin and Eddie have a match. It is not a very good one. Uh, kind of dull. The crowd is kind of sitting on their hands throughout it. I don't know why. Uh, match ends in DQ when Ric Flair comes out with a crowbar and he takes out Eddie. Um, Kidman comes out with Tori. He gets taken out too. Then... Ric Flair ends up pashing Tori Wilson. She gives us a look that, that like she liked it, and of course, because he's the nature boy. And then he comes back down after he realizes, that, oh shit, I forgot my watch that Eddie had left with Bobby Heenan, grabbed it, uh, puts it on his wrist, goes away. Um, Goldberg is beating up a. a, a and he bloodies Sid Vicious in the back. Um, then we cut to the uh, the opening. Uh, cut back to the arena. Buff comes out. He cuts a very short promo on Jeff Jarrett. And both Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara. Again, bringing up that segment, uh, I didn't like that segment. I thought there, there's a certain line you don't cross in pro re wrestling when you're when you're doing shoot, uh, shoot, uh, and I think Vince has really realized where this line is. You can have a good match and everything. You can say, "Oh, we're going to have a great match." But you can't say why you're going to have a great match. It's been, you can't say that you're working together to put on a show, and they kind of exposed that, uh, and I think maybe they realised it, because they, 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 they're mo more focusing on the, the fact with Jeff Jarrett, Luger ends up coming out after Jarrett comes out and tries to um, take out Buff, Buff ends up getting full Nelson, Jeff Jarrett, he ducks, uh, yeah, guitar hits the head of, um, Buff kind of awkwardly, and, yeah, not very cool. Um, Sid, uh, Sid's in the back, uh, he's bloody, yeah, not very good. <laughs> um, then, uh, Rick, uh, then, uh, then we see, this is one of those things I don't like, guys, I really don't. As you, anyone who's a long-term watcher of the the show, the, of my channel, knows, I like to know why a camera's there. Because it's, it's a show where we know that there are cameras there, where it's not a TV show where... where we're, like, outside... where we're outside looking in sort of thing, where watching a show where we know, we, can, we, see, we see cameras, we know things ha happen and we know people are there to film them happening, uh, sort of thing. It's not like a sitcom or anything like that, it's a different thing. It's like, a, it's like an event where we're witnessing, uh, where people at home watch, it's like we're watching a football game, or a, 
except it's a work. <laughs> we know it's a work and everything. We, we want to be taken along for the ride. Um, where was it? So Eddie's calling Ray. It's a very short segment. It, 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 it's just one of those things that irritates me. It's like, took me out of the show. You just took me out of it in uh, that that's sort of thing. And it's, it's not anything Eddie did. It's nothing, uh, not the way it was filmed. It's why it was. It's, it's people not realising things. So if if there had been a camera guy just walking down the, the, the uh, like on his way and then he spots Eddie in the distance walking and, and, he, and he does look hurt, uh, obviously. Um, that would have been fine, but it was that the camera was like no further, like it was probably that far away. Like, he's on the ground. And I'm like, the guy's hurting and there's a bunch of people hanging around. Why are they helping him? <laughs> sort of thing. I shouldn't, but I shouldn't be thinking this. Okay. Uh, Brad Armstrong versus Berlin. Why these two people were fight, fighting, I know. Uh, I kind of covered it before. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Brad Armstrong strong wins. He, uh, but um, after the match, the, they bit uh, he gets beaten up by the wall. Uh, but he won the match because he grabbed the rope uh, and while uh, Berlin was trying to give him a neck breaker. <sighs> kind, of, kind of a lame finish, but okay. Um, uh, we have Ric Flair interview. Uh, I think that I'm pretty sure this is to promote the upcoming match with DDP. Uh, tell, uh, then we have the TV title match, Rick Steiner vs. Chris Benoit. Rick Steiner wins after two chair shots. One from Rick himself because uh, Benoit dived on the, the chair and it hit him in the head. Hmm. Wonder why he had so many concussions. Uh, then he gets hit again by Dean Malenko in a betrayal move. Um, and he ends up joining back up with Saturn. Long live the revolution. Okay, um, Mike Tanay interviews Bret Hart. He talks to him about the injury he sustained at the previous Nitro. His ankle is hurt. He goes into a match with Luger. Luger wins by submission, uh, because of a, a half Boston crap. Now... Goldberg has a quick interview. Uh, he's backstage. He points to a puddle of blood that he left Sid in and says that's what he's going to do. Uh, essentially, that's what's going to happen to Sid. Uh, again, in the match. Uh, then we cut back to the arena. Medusa comes out advertising Nitro's perfume. They pour it all over the head of... <laughs> she pulls it all over the head of Bobby Heenan. Poor innocent guy. It's... Because uh, she's in this stupid bikini. Vince, I didn't want to see that. If you had Mona do it, I would have been okay with it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Mona is Molly Holly. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> then we have the infamous match with Sting and Hogan. Now... <laughs> uh, I do have some information on this. I will try to remember to put it in the... I'll tell you what, I'll mark it now. It's here. There's a few... Someone brought it up in a... Uh, like a forum thing. So I'll try and remember to put that in the um, description below. Basically, it was a, uh, like... Hogan laid down for no apparent reason. Uh, and why is there no apparent reason? Because it was never explained. As far as I know, he showed back up and he cut a promo on Russo. After
Joffrey left. And that was it. They came back just a couple of weeks before Super Brawl, and that's what happened. Okay. Don't know why. Uh, it was never explained. Like, the last time we, we, we see Hogan, he lays down for Sting, and it's never explained. At least... I end up trying to explain it sort of thing later on in my fantasy booking thing. Okay. I think I did something where I tried to explain it. Um, because you got to remember shit like that. Like, shit just happens. Uh. Um, then we go to our... Um, Goldberg Sid match. Sid comes out fine. Then Sid. Uh, then as Goldberg comes out, he's ambushed by both outsiders. Sid comes out, tries to beat him up. Uh, doesn't work. Oh, by the way, the crowd had really turned on um, what had happened before with Sting and Hogan. They really didn't like it. Bell rings and that. Um, Goldberg ends up winning by ref stoppage, and I gotta say, out of all the ref stoppages, this one kind of makes sense because uh, you see Sid bleeding. He's doing a pretty good job of selling it, what happened and everything. Um, yeah, and after this, um, he's escorted to the back with Rick Steiner. Apparently, Rick and him are friends. Okay. I don't know. Uh, honestly, uh, again, guys, I haven't watched what's come before, so I just picked up. I, I'm pretending I'm a fan of Russo, and I heard he was going. This was his first night, and I'm pretending that I that that in '99 that's what's happening. I've watched that show. I booked the pay per view. I've watched the pay per view. Uh, but as I said, if if it were me. I wouldn't have bought this show. Okay, so I was saying that I I, I did like I ended up liking uh, what had happened, or and I but I ended up getting the show anyway. Let's say, um, yeah. Uh, then after that, we have video of what happened last on the last Nitro with Ric Flair and Kimberly. The hotel room scene. I don't. Okay. <sighs> Sting comes out and he says he wants a fight. He didn't come here for a night off. He wants a fight. He can't, he goes. He leaves. And then we have the strap match with DDP and Ric Flair, which is not very good. I didn't like it. Oh, I've got to be honest. <laughs> um. Uh, there's parts, of, like, the, the finish was okay, because Flair gets beaten up, so does, uh, every, <laughs> so does David, um, I, and from, from what I can tell, this ends up leading to what I hear is Flair getting buried in the desert, uh, by the animals. I get, uh, yeah, so Flair and David Flair get, both get beaten up by DDP. Then... He's stretched to the back. He's beaten up again by the filthy animals. <laughs> okay. And then we come back. Sting comes out. He says he wanted a fight. So he left an open challenge for anyone to come out and have a fight with him. Goldberg comes out. Good people wanted Goldberg. He comes out. Uh, he ends up winning in a pretty quick thing here. It's probably a little long, a little, slightly longer than TV time at uh, time. Uh, match usually. Um, Goldberg goes over, and this is where the controversy begins, because Sting didn't say it was for the title. No one said it was for the title, but Goldberg leaves with the belt. And that's where we leave things. i got to give a root. Okay, so as I said, there's a couple of complaints I had with the show. Let me just address them again really quickly. I don't like segments where there is a, a camera in the room and we don't know why it's there. Okay. 
I don't know, okay, I can accept the fact that there are just cameras roaming around the backstage area for, to try and get, uh, like, they're, they're like reporters, they're looking for, for shit happening. But if you see someone laying on the ground injured and they're call, uh, like even if they're calling someone, you you're you go you're going to get a doctor. You're going you go you're going to get the trainer or something and everything. Let's see stuff like that. It bugs me. Um, what else have we got here? Oh yeah, after the match, when Goldberg leaves with the belt. Sting, Scorpion, Death Drops, uh, Charles Robinson, who had ref the last match, gotten beaten up, but had managed to come back. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the Goldberg Sid match wasn't great, but the crowd were into it, so therefore I was a bit more into it. It ended okay. Um, I'm not sure I, the explanation I'm going to get next time is I'm going to. Like, uh, the Sting-Hogan situation. I don't like the fact that that's never going to get explained. So, fair enough. Uh, I didn't like Medusa coming out in a bikini. Okay. I just don't find that woman very attractive. Um, great worker, though. Everything else about her is fine. I just, like, that's a situation you wouldn't want to put Medusa... That's, that's not how you u utilize Medusa. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll just run through things here. Um, a little less interview time, because, like, that's not why I bought the show. I bought the show to watch matches. Uh, to pay off storylines. That's why I watched... That's why I buy pay-per-views. I don't want... I don't want to see a whole bunch of stuff that I could probably see on Nitro. Or Thunder. Okay. Uh... But I like the fact that he managed to find a way to utilize Jared. Um, I would have used utilized him in a match, uh, unless there was some reason why you couldn't. Uh, you made up a match here for no for no reason. Um, yeah, but uh, middle of the road show, I would say. Not a great show. Not a very good one. Probably. Okay, here's the middle. It's uh, here's the middle. No. Okay, here's the middle. Here's good. Here's bad. This is about here. Not 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 uh, closer to here. Yeah. So okay, huh? yeah, easier easier thing. Four out of ten. Four out of ten. Not quite halfway. <laughs> Closer to bad than good. <laughs> uh, yeah, because there was some stuff on there that I liked, and like I, I like the setup of the card. I, I like the the card looks okay. From a if you cut out half that crap, you would, and the DQ for like a bunch of DQ finishes are uh, on a pay per view is bad. On TV, on TV, it's okay. Well, like I, I, I'm willing to accept s stuff like that happening on TV. Uh, so what do we got next? Uh, we're leading up to mayhem. The tournament will be starting. However, let's double check the network, shall we? Okay, let's go to the vault, and we scroll right over because we can't let anyone see that we've actually got Nitro on. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of 2001 stuff on there. Let's go back to 99. Ah, uh, there's all of December, but. Episode 216 is still missing. So, we've got two shows that we can watch in between time. Uh, one's missing. So, after that, after the next two episodes, unless they've uploaded it, they're 
on a streak of uploading a bunch of nitros at the moment. So let's hope, fingers crossed, that this continues and they plug in the gaps that they've left. Because I know there's a couple of gaps all still in 99. Uh, there's another gap in between... Oh, there's a huge gap. There's, it goes 205, then to 208. Uh, so, there's that. But pretty much between there and I think the end, you'll find that there's like everything's there uh, okay guys so we, I will be back uh, tomorrow tomorrow morning yes tomorrow morning I will be back with Connor and we will be doing the draft of Roar and Smackdown hope you can be there because it will be a live show but if you can't be there Come back and watch the show afterwards, and uh, and let us know who you think got the better roster because we're going to talk about that because we're going to have the first twenty picks, and then we're going to decide what else between the two of us uh, we would do with those twenty picks. Okay, bye.